Welcome to the Vitazyme program. Vitazyme is a safe, non-toxic, highly effective biostimulant for use on any crop. Vitazyme will increase yield and more importantly, quality of all crops. Vitazyme helps plants tolerate stressful conditions and to help them express their genetic potential. Vitazyme will help make fertilizers work better, but it will not totally replace fertilizers. It works best when incorporated into a complete, common sense soil and crop management program. Vitazyme works so well because it contains natural active agents that stimulate plant growth and development, such as growth regulators, enzymes, glycosides, and other powerful biostimulants. Yet it is gentle acting and registered with OMRI and other certifying bodies for organic use. The following presentation will go in depth into the science behind why Vitazyme is so effective on such a wide range of crops in almost any environment. So how do we explain the pictures that we see here? This is a photograph from Missouri where you can obviously see the increased growth of the corn, the height. This is going to yield much better result. In Ukraine, looking at some potatoes, you see many more tubers, larger tubers, larger canopy with more foliage, greener foliage, so increased chlorophyll presence. All of these effects can be explained through by design. Some sugar beets in Poltava, obviously larger roots, and you're going to get higher bricks, larger foliage canopy, and again, increased chlorophyll content, so we're harvesting more energy from the sun. Vitazyme helps to maximize crop performance by optimizing leaf chlorophyll, rhizosphere biological activity, and root recovery after damage. Here in Nebraska, we see some corn roots. Vitazyme on the right, obviously a much larger root mass, more fine hairs that are actually doing the work, uptaking nutrients. And you can see some larger foliage and better stalk as well. So what is Vitazyme? Vitazyme is an all-natural biostimulant. It's made from a fermentation process and it operates through multiple active agents through multiple modes of action. Some of the active agents in Vitazyme include brassinosteroids, triocontinol, glucans, and glycosides, B vitamins, and other enzymes and components that we've yet to identify. This chart shows the growth regulator interactions. You see ethylene, cytokinins, auxins, abscisic acids, to mix in triacontinol, gibberellins, brassinosteroids. This just shows that they interact with each other to have effects on plants, where you see the cytokinin line connecting to the brassinosteroids. In effect, they'll help each other out to maximize plant growth. This is a model of a brassinosteroid molecule, homo brassinolid, one of the, a couple that are found in Vitazyme. Some of the brassinosteroid effects on the metabolic processes include stress tolerance. We see a greater increase of stress tolerance in all plants, whether it's water stress, heat stress, fertilizer or salt stress. We see an increase in plant growth for brassinosteroids, an increase in photosynthesis, an increase in protein and nucleic acid production at the cellular level. We see an increase in disease resistance of plants with brassinosteroids steroids in effect, and also strengthening of cell membranes and increased permeability. This just shows a statement from Tazen Zeiger's book, Plant Physiology, 4th edition, which is a common college textbook, showing the brassicone steroids comprise a new class of plant growth regulators. There's little known about them, but they now merit an entire chapter in the book. This is a brassinosteroid signaling model. What we see here, we can zoom in on the cell. We see the cell membrane, the cell wall. The brassinosteroid, BR1, makes contact with the cell wall. Through the cell wall, it sends a secondary messenger into the cell that creates signals and enzymes that affect the DNA in the nucleus of the cell. The DNA, in turn, expresses itself through RNA and enzyme production, biosynthesis that radiates into the cell and produces successive tiers of enzymes that affect plant growth. Brassinosteroids improve anti-stress responses by selective changes at specific points of metabolic pathways by gene expression and the synthesis of certain enzymes, proteins, and resulting metabolites. Here we see some corn in upstate New York. On the left, Vitazyme treated corn. On the right, it's a control. You can clearly see there's a high amount of drought stress in the control, where you see relatively little in the Vitazyme side. We know that when rains come, which they will, which crop is going to produce quicker? The Vitazyme side. We're going to produce uh, growth much faster. That side's ready to grow, whereas the control side is going to be in recovery mode. It's going to need a number of days to recover and then start growing again. The loss of that time results in a loss of yield. 
Tricontinol is another growth regulator we find in Vitazyme. It's a straight chain alcohol, 30 carbon straight chain. Count them there, you've got 27, 28, 29, 30, and the alcohol OH. Some of the triacontinol effects on metabolic processes include increased photosynthesis, increased nutrient uptake, and increased enzyme activity. Triacontinol mode of action is very similar to the brassinosteroid mode of action, whereas the triacontinol connects with a cell membrane through which it sends a secondary messenger to the nucleus of the cell. In this case, the secondary messenger is 9 beta L plus adenosine, causing the nucleus to create enzymes, create successive tiers of enzymes that increase the plant metabolism and increase the accumulation of critical intermediary metabolic compounds, resulting in greater dry weight and plant growth. Effective concentrations of tricontinol spray applications are 0.1 to 10 micrograms per liter. Very small amounts of tricontinol per liter can have very large effects on plant growth. The modes of action of iDesign run through a list. First is the enzyme cascade system. This shows uh, very simply in a diagram how very little metabolic activator attaching to the cells creates excessive tiers of enzymes in increasing amounts. They have a very large physiological effect on the cells and tissues of the plant. This holds true for triacontinol, for brassinosteroids, and most any other growth regulator. The second mode of action, we call the rhizosphere activation, has five points in it. First being the symbiotic cycle. Here's a diagram of the symbiotic cycle. This happens in everyday plants, everyday life, all the time. This shows how when we add Vitazyme to the cycle, spraying on the plant on the left, we're going to increase photosynthesis, we're going to increase the production of carbohydrates and energy acquired by the plant from the sun. And the plant then will in turn feed that energy through the root system into the rhizosphere, helping to feed the soil organisms. It helps to nourish the soil organisms and, and grow microorganisms that, that really are going to be helpful to the plant, such as cyanobacteria, fungi, tenomycetes, algae, protozoa, mycorrhiza. In turn, these soil organisms help feed the plant. Many of the organisms will break down minerals and nutrients. They'll help uh, feed the plant enzymes, antibiotics, hormones, and growth regulators that will affect the plant growth. And this happens all the time. It also shows how we can introduce Vitazyme to the plant system and it will feed into the soil or to the soil system, and it will feed up into the plant. This is a micrograph of a root hair. See the tip, and then some of the fine hairs coming off the side. Right around that, you can see there's some small mucigel. That's the root exudate. That's what the plant is putting into the soil in terms of energy to help feed these micronutrients. In this slide, we can see on the left, the mucigel in the corner, and that's the root exudate. Below that is actually the root. You don't see that in this slide. And then you see the bacteria in very high concentrations feeding on that mucigel. And as you move away from the root, so further out into the soil, you'll see how that bacteria will diminish. So we're really nourishing a population of microorganisms very close to the root surface. Just a picture of Pseudomonas, a type of bacteria found in the root zone. Protozoa, here in this case, an amoeba, about to digest a bacteria. It shows a level of competition in the root zone is very high. Actinomycetes, also nourished when we use Vitazyme. Cyanobacteria, another organism in the root zone. Very interesting critter, they produce carbon through uh, the photosynthetic cells that they have. They also, with the, the heterocysts, will help produce soil nitrogen. They'll fix carbon and nitrogen into the soil for the plant to use. Earthworms, we find that Vitazyme will help nourish earthworms through the plant system. It will increase the amount of mites as well. We see a lot of soil mites. Many of these critters will gobble up predaceous nematodes. Uh, the mesostigmata mite will eat up to 400 a day. Pretty hungry critters. In this slide, we see a pine seedling. Pines typically have very shallow or very small root systems. Here what we see is the mycorrhiza growth from those roots. The roots you can see are in, in kind of an orange coloration and then everything coming off of those is really the fungus, the mycorrhiza. The mycorrhiza then extend the capacity of that root system. Without it, that seedling wouldn't get the nourishment or the nutrients it needs to survive. Here's a close-up of mycorrhiza in the root system. They tie into cells directly into the roots and then grow out from there. The little mycelia work their way through the soil and expand that feeding capacity. We see the mycorrhiza effectively multiply the root feeding zone by tens to hundreds of times and it improves the fertilizer use efficiency. The second mode of action in the rhizosphere activation is the oxygen 
hydrogen ethylene cycle. There's a lot of chemistry in this slide. Here you'll see uh, the root exudate feeding the microorganisms on the root on the lower part of the slide, whose increased activity uses up the available oxygen in a small zone along the root, creating what we call an anaerobic microsite. In this microsite, Iron will be broken down from its plus three insoluble crystal form to the plus two soluble form and in turn release negatively charged nutrients or anions from the crystal that can be taken up by the root. At the same time, the released iron can exchange with positively charged nutrients or cations on the clay colloid and release them for plant uptake. The plus two iron will combine with organic precursor to form ethylene, which is released into the soil to act as an anesthetic to the rapidly growing microbes. This moderates their activity much like a governor would in a car. As the microbial activity slows down, more oxygen can return to the microsite and repeat the cycle. In this system, we see how microbes in the soil are fed by the plant and are governed by chemistry to help break down soil nutrients more effectively and help them be delivered to the growing plant. The third rhizosphere activation mode of action is nutrient availability. All nutrients require microorganisms to make them available. Here we see some charts with nitrogen and phosphorus. Where on the left you have nitrogen or phosphorus in its organic or mineral form. We know that various microbes, bacteria, have to break down that nitrogen or that phosphorus into usable forms, ammonium or nitrate, that can be taken up by the plant. Phosphorus especially, the mycorrhiza, help deliver the phosphorus for the root system of the plant, bring it into the system. Sulfur, calcium, magnesium, potassium, all work in very similar ways where they need bacteria and fungi to help break them down to usable levels for the plant to use. Iron, zinc, manganese, copper, boron, molybdenum, same way. Micronutrients require the same microorganisms to help break them down so that they can be uptaken by the plant. Disease suppression, another rhizosphere activation mode of action for Vitazyme. In this picture, we see uh, how Vitazyme will help create a defensive perimeter around the root zone with various microbes, protozoa, nematodes, actinomyces, fungi, and certain beneficial bacteria that will help protect that root zone from attackers, pathogenic fungi or bacteria, pathogenic nematodes, um, are constantly uh, trying to get at the roots of a plant and infect that plant so they can weaken it and then ingest it. Vitazyme will help increase the amount of beneficial microorganisms in the root zone so that they can help fend off that attack and help keep that plant healthy. Here we see beneficial root bacteria clustering around a root, again creating a buffer zone, an area that uh, they can defend that root because that root is providing energy and nutrients to the bacteria. Here we see some beneficial leaf microbes, same thing happens on the leaf surface, always being inundated by predators and attacked by pathogens. If we can help increase the good guys on the surface, they'll help protect the plant. Here we see a nematode trapping fungus. This little nematode is about to be ingested. It's a lasso fungus. It creates a little hole where the nematode crawls through and then it clamps down on it and ingests it. We have a lot of those in the root zone. We won't have as much nematode pressure. Here's a mesostigmata mite, pretty fearsome looking critter. They'll eat up to 400 nematodes a day. So if we can populate the root zone with those mesostigmatas, we can really help protect that plant against nematodes. The last mode of action in the rhizosphere activation effect are the soil effects. Here's a picture of a cornfield that's been cut away by a digger so that we can expose the compaction layers in the soil. You can see the hard plow pan on the bottom. You can see how the tractor tires create a pan up on the top. And you can also see where the planter cuts a pan as well so that they create these zones of compacted soil where water, nutrients, and oxygen find a hard time finding ways through. Uh, the same thing goes for roots. Those roots need to get through that compaction zone to access the nutrients in that soil below and to grow through that can be very difficult. So if we can over time reduce that compaction, can allow those roots to grow further faster and access nutrients better uh, to increase that plant growth quickly. Here's a diagram showing kind of a close-up of what we're talking about. If we can increase earthworm activity, we're increasing channels for that soil. We increase root growth. We're also breaking up that soil structure, allowing the roots to come through and create cleavage planes. Fungal mycelia as well will help break through the colloids and break up the soil structure. And an increased exudate of polysaccharide will help glue the clay particles together 
and form soil structural units that allow water and oxygen to flow around the soil and create a better structure for plant growth. Some of the vital design benefits to the soil are caused by improving structure and porosity. These come from greater polysaccharide production, increased glomalin synthesis, more mycorrhizal hyphae and sacs, increased root mass and channels, and greater earthworm activity. All of these combined will help improve soil structure over time. Here's some roots from potatoes, Fresh Isle, Maine. By design roots on the right, control on the left. The, uh, much healthier root system, much stronger root system, and a, a lot more roots. And they're going to break up that soil structure. They're going to access nutrients a lot better than the plant on the left. We see an improvement in fertilizer efficiency when we use by design. Here's a study from Branchton, Ontario in 2007. This is on corn. We see that the corn yield is on the graph on the left. Nitrogen level usage on the bottom. And you see at full nitrogen, Vitazyme increased the yield of corn quite a bit. But you also see if we half the nitrogen rate from 120 kilograms per hectare to 60, that the Vitazyme still increased at about the same rate. But it was almost the same as the control at full nitrogen. So essentially, you could cut your nitrogen in half, use Vitazyme, and get about the same yield result. You see this also, the fertilizer efficiency effect in sugar beets. This is a study done in Vinitsa, Ukraine. Four different levels of fertilizer. And at each of those levels, we see that Vitazyme increased yield over the control level. Same thing in wheat. This is also done in Vinitsa, Ukraine. The fertilizer uh, levels at the bottom, four different protocols. And we see the same curve. Vitazyme will increase the efficiency of fertilizer uptake and plant growth at every level of fertilizer. And in this case, you could half your fertilizer again and still get the same result by using Vitazyme. Application methods, pretty simple. Any way you can get it down. Vitazyme works great for drip irrigation. It won't clog lines, it won't coagulate. It tank mixes with any product, herbicides, pesticides, fungicides. We've never found a product that it's not compatible with. You tank mix it with anything. You put it through drip irrigation, put it through overhead irrigation, orchard sprayers, field sprayers, back pack sprayers, aerial. In a home garden situation, you simply can water it in at a 1% rate. Very easy to use. So as you can see, there are a lot of benefits using Vitazyme. Vitazyme works through multiple modes of action, multiple active agents. It's created by a unique fermentation process using organic ingredients. It's got an activity over a wide range of soils and climates. It's highly proven. We have 700 or more research studies, and we're getting more every year, it's showing excellent responses. Research goes back to 1995, and it's been carried on ever since. We get very consistent responses. We always see a positive response if by design supplied properly. It's versatile and easy to use. A tank mix with all fertilizers, herbicides, insecticides. It can be applied to the seeds, to the soil, or the leaves of a plant at nearly any growth stage. It's highly cost effective, substantial savings on fertilizers, plus you get higher yields and better quality. It's got an indefinite shelf life, it's not a live culture, it's non-toxic, environmentally friendly, and has no harmful side effects. We found that by design is very easy to apply. Most applications are one liter per hectare or 13 ounces per acre. In fruit and vegetable crops or tree crops, you may put up to four applications per season. For field crops, usually we're talking two applications. So it's very effective in terms of increasing yield, increasing quality, and hopefully this summarizes some of the benefits that you can find by using Vitazyme.